How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? You don't want it better than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. There is no shortcut. There is no hack. There's no sweatless solution. You, you're going to have to work. There is always weakness to work on. Always. A lot of them. Why would we allow ourselves to make easy, easy excuses? Why would you allow that? Are you going to make today count? Because that's all you can control. And that's all that matters. It doesn't matter where you start, guys. It doesn't matter what talents you're born with. It's about where you finish. And this race isn't over. It's not over. You can still come in first in the marathon. But you got to start today. You got to start now. You have everything you have. Everything you need is inside you. But I realize that that doesn't mean just because you don't think you're good enough doesn't mean you can't be good. Doesn't mean you can't be great. Doesn't mean you can't carry on. But it's not going to always be like this. Your condition is not your conclusion. Nothing is impossible. So you have to decide before you leave What's that first thing that's been impossible for you? I want you to attack it and overcome it. Because if you run from the adversity that you're going through today, you'll forever be at that level in which you're going through for the rest of your life. One day you'll look back on your life and appreciate the struggle and have nothing but gratitude for everything that happened along the way. And you come to recognize that in return, you're given the chance to earn the greatest edge of all, and one that can never be taken away. You have enough right now to change your life. You have enough right now to flip this world upside down. You have enough. You got enough power. You got enough anointing. You got enough grace. You got enough patience. You got enough gifting to make your money. Get out of debt. Get yourself together and change everything about your world. Realize that you have the ability to make an impact. You have an opportunity to change that story in your head Put yourself out there, because when you do, amazing things happen. The essence of life is growth. The essence of life is growth, to do the best you can. And here's what's interesting. Humans are the only life form that will do less than they possibly can. Humans are the only life form that will settle for less. Every other life form except human beings strive to its maximum capacity. How tall will a tree grow? Approximately as tall as it possibly can. You never heard of a tree growing half as high as it could. No, trees don't grow half. Trees send their roots down as deep as possible, stretch their limbs up as high as possible, produce every leaf possible and every fruit possible. As a matter of fact, you never heard of a human physically growing half. We keep growing until we're done. Now that's the part of life we can't control. It's genetically coded. And that's probably why we keep growing till we're done. Because we can't control that part. It's the rest of our growing that we control. The growing of our mind, the expansion of our mind, that we can control. And that's what tends to get away from us. All life forms inherently strive to their max except human beings. Now, why wouldn't human beings strive to their maximum possibility? Here's why. Because we've been given the dignity of choice. It makes us different than alligators and trees and birds. The dignity of choice makes us different than all other life forms. And here's the choice. To become part of what we could be, enough to get by, or to become all that we can be. My best advice for you is to choose the all. Earn all you can, make all the friends you can, read as many books as you can, develop as many skills as you can, see as much as possible, do as much as possible, make as much fortune as possible, give as much of it away as possible. 
the man. There's no life like it. I'm telling you, once I got on track, I've never looked back. Pick up the challenge. Go for it. Take the best of the two easy. Take the route of it's easy to get ahead. It's easy to do all you can. It's easy to succeed. It's easy to have financial freedom. The more you do, the more you get. See, if you're playing it safe, you're not going to win. If you're playing it safe, like that old saying, you know, you were taught when you're a little girl, better to be safe than sorry. Well, that's a bunch of crap. It's not better to be safe than sorry. It's by trying things that you figure out how far you can go. You got to get outside the box. Like it's reported, Edison tried 3,000 ways before he built the incandescent light. He, did, he said he didn't fail 3,000 times. He said there was 3,000 different steps to building a light bulb. Well, there's different steps to get to where you're going. And I really do treat winning and losing exactly the same. I do not let it upset me. Do you think that's a big part of why you're so successful? Well, it's part of why I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it is, because I'll try anything. Like, if, if I'm into an idea, the idea of losing never enters my mind. See, I have worked with giants. I had the good fortune of working with Sir Edmund Hilder. He was the first man to stand on top of the world. And I worked with him on three different occasions. And the only difference in Ed Hillary and Bob Proctor is in his, his side. Now he's gone now, but he was a big man. And he shook hands with me, his hand wrapped right around mine. I felt like a dwarf, you know. And and talking to him like it never entered his mind he wouldn't get to the top of the mountain but he failed in 1951 he failed in 1952 it wasn't until 1953 that he got to the top of the mountain you now people had died for centuries trying to do that he said i knew if i could see it in here i could hold it out here stella man wrote that in a book you can see it in your head you can hold it in your hand and that's right and if you're not prepared to lose, you're never going to win because you're always playing it safe. And there's no, there's no reward in that. Dare to go forward. Winston Churchill once said, courage is rightly considered the foremost of the virtues because upon it. All others depend. Courage is the chief distinguishing characteristic of the true leader. It is almost always visible in the leader's words and actions. It is absolutely indispensable to success, happiness, and the ability to motivate other people to be the best they can be. Follow through on your vision. In a way, it is easy to develop a big vision for yourself and for the person you want to be. It is easy to commit yourself to living with complete integrity, but it requires incredible courage to follow through on your vision and on your commitment. You see, as soon as you set a high goal or standard for yourself, you will run into all kinds of difficulties and setbacks, refuse to compromise. You will be surrounded by temptations to compromise your values and your vision. You will feel an almost irresistible urge to get along by going along. Your desire to earn the respect and cooperation of others can easily lead to the abandonment of your principles. And here is where courage comes in. Stick to your principles. Courage combined with integrity is the foundation of character. The first form of courage is your ability to stick to your principles, to stand for what you believe in and to refuse to budge unless you feel right about the alternative. Courage is also the ability to step out in faith, to launch out into the unknown, and then to face the inevitable doubt and uncertainty that accompany every new venture. Avoid the comfort zone. Most people are seduced by the lure of the comfort zone. This can be likened to going out of a warm house on a cold, windy morning. The average person, when he feels the storm swirling outside his comfort zone, rushes back inside where it's nice and warm. But not the true leader. The true leader has the courage to step away from the familiar and comfortable and to face the unknown with no guarantees of success. It is this ability to boldly go where no man has gone before that distinguishes you as a leader from the average person. This is the example that you must set 
if you are to rise above the average. 